What's up, everybody? We're here to go over UFC Atlantic City, Aaron Blanchfield taking on Manon Faro. Uh, but real quick, I was going to go over the results as far as the betting goes for last week. Um, so I had a play on Rafael uh, Filo that hit and a minus 155. That was a one-unit play. Um, then I had a two-fight parlay that was Nincheku and Davis. It was minus 128. That was a one-unit play. Um, so I just uh, I just lost my job last week. And, uh, you know, I was up, you know, uh uh, Rafael Filo had won. Uh, Mike Davis had won his fight, and I'm, I didn't went ahead and cashed out my my two fight parlay. I didn't really make any money on it, but I was able to at least get my money back because um, I just I couldn't afford to to take the risk. I wanted to get out while I you know get up while I was ahead or get out while I was ahead. Uh, so I went ahead and cashed it out early. And so I ended up coming up with some money there, but I also had um, I also had this hit, which really you know, put me in, put me in some good money. Um, this is a, a parlay where I went against, you know, most of my picks. I kind of, this is like a worst case scenario parlay that, uh, where I reversed some of the picks that I had, like, uh, Christian Rodriguez. I had picked Dolgarian, um, uh, Oven St. Pru put him on there, uh, because one of the people in my Facebook group had mentioned that he thought, you know, OSP was going to knock out and check Wu. And I was like, you know what I'll make it's, it's good value. I'll make a parlay you know, with them on it and add a couple other people. Uh, this would, this would have been a lot more money. Um, if, if on Lusa's fight, if Lusa had won and it not been a no contest, but I don't know, like I know not all books, um, we will count some, sometimes they'll, uh, they'll kill your parlay, you know, if there's a no contest or, or whatever. Um, uh, you know, I was using Bovada for this one. So, uh, Bovada, that fight just drops off and I get paid for the rest of the parlay. And I, it was pretty crazy that it hit. I only, I put 10 bucks on this. Uh, like I said, went against some of my some of my picks just in case, you know, because I was trying to try, trying to throw together just some extra money to win or whatever, and it did. It cashed for six hundred and twenty five bucks. So, uh, you know, that was a good way to top the night off, man. And I wasn't super confident in Ty Bora either, um, and I'm glad he got it done. Um, it hurt me to see uh, Tui Vasa lose again, but but I, I guess I, my my brain picked right on the Ty Bora, you know, taking him down and 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 finishing him that way. So. But anyway, man, so we made some money last week. Um not not a whole lot. Uh probably uh somewhere a little over a unit profit. Uh maybe maybe like twelve hundred bucks if I did the math right. Uh something like that. Um but either way, let's get into this card, man, and uh let's see what fights did we lose so far. Oh yeah, gotta do my thing. Um uh, first off, please like and subscribe, guys. It really helped me out a lot. And uh, thank you to all the new subscribers and and everybody who's been who's been uh, popping up and, and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate all you guys. And uh, thank you for caring what I have to say. Um, and if you're new to the channel, what I do is I go through and I give out all my picks for each of the fights, and then I give out my bets at the end of the video. And uh, if you're not interested in watching my videos, you just want to see my picks and my bets. You can uh, follow my social medias. High kick underscore fight picks is Instagram and TikTok. And then there's a Facebook group, High Kick Fight Picks on Facebook. Uh, and feel free to post all your bets. Anything MMA related, post it in that group, man. Anything you want. Um, I love to see everybody's bets and stuff like that. And it gives me ideas as well. I want to see everybody make money. So, you know, please, please post your stuff in there. You know, anything, anything you want. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, anything else? I think that's, I think that's it, man. So, um, yeah, so aside from aside from my betting accounts uh, taking huge hits right now, you know, um, it doesn't help that I've had like a, I haven't had like a losing year so far, but I've had like a, you know, I win money and then, you know, lose a little bit next card this year so far, man, it's been, or I'll break even. So like last year, towards the end of the year, I think I had like fucking, you know, like an eight card, you know, win streak where I didn't lose any money. And uh, this year it's been kind of back and forth or, you know, at least, at least pretty close to breaking even. Um, but now I lose my job on top of that. And uh, yeah, so already already found a, another place to work, but I'm switching around to like a night shift right now. So I'm still trying to get in the, get in the swing of things and, and whatever. But uh, it also gave me time to get my notes done early. So uh, 
Oh, and also, we we lost Dominic Reyes versus Carlos Ol- Olberg. I've been waiting on that fight to happen so I could load up on Olberg. Um, and then we lost Olberg versus Minifield. I still would have went with Olberg there. Uh, yeah, either way, you know, it's disappointing that Olberg's having trouble getting the fight. So, uh, first up, we got Nate Landwehr taking on Jamal Emmers. And Nate Landwehr is five nine with a seventy and a half inch reach. He is seventeen and five and four and three in the UFC, and he's a plus one sixty underdog. Uh, eight wins by knockout, two wins by submission. Uh, two two of his losses in the UFC have been by knockout. Um, he's had some tough fights, and he's had some nice wins. Some, you know, David Onama being one of his best wins. You know, nobody expected him to win that fight. Um, but we saw the levels. You know, when he went up and he fought Dan Ige, you know, we could tell that it, it showed that Dan Ige really is, you know, a step above a lot of the people, you know, in the in the division. So, um, didn't go well for him, but. You know, his pace and his pressure and, you know, his cardio are his best weapons. Um, if you have a bad gas tank, he will take advantage of that. Uh, we've seen him take an early beating before and come back and get the win. Um, you know, the uh, before the UFC, he was over in Russia, you know, fighting tough guys over there. And, uh, you know, he's good enough everywhere that if you have a weak part of your game, he can exploit that. You know, and although I wouldn't call him really great as a grappler or a striker, he's not super technical. He just kind of wears on guys. Uh, till they start fading, you know, and he kind of overwhelms them late in the fight. Um, throws a lot of volume, fights well in the clinch, has a real nice anaconda choke. Um, it is important to note that the last three people uh, he beat all gassed out, you know, before the first round was over. Um, he does get hit a lot, but it doesn't really phase him that much for the most part. Uh, throws good front kicks, you know, will kind of will kind of stomp kick the lead leg of his opponent. Uh, I don't know if that's considered an oblique kick the way he throws it or whatever, but. Uh, throws nice calf kicks. He was getting outstruck by uh, Austin Lingo in the first round before Lingo, you know, kind of started to slow down and he took over, um, which isn't really a good look because Lingo hasn't really looked the best, you know, lately. Um, as far as how he matches up in this fight, I would say not very well in most areas. You know, Emmers, Emmers is very good, man. And, uh, you know, Nate's best hope is that he can tire Emmers out and win late. Uh, Nate shows... 47% striking accuracy with 56% striking defense, uh, 42% takedown accuracy with 86% takedown defense. He averages one takedown per 15 minutes, and he lands on average uh, 6.14 strikes per minute while absorbing 5.58. Uh, so he puts out good volume, but he does get hit a lot, almost pretty close to the same, which is not is never good. Um, he's taken on Jamal Emmers. He is 34 years old. He's 5'10 with a 74-inch reach. He is 20 and 7 and 3 and 3 in the UFC, and he's a minus 192 favorite. Uh, so you may think that, you know, oh, he's 3 and 3 in the UFC, you know, he's not that great, but, you know, he lost his debut to Giga Jakazi by split decision. Very close fight, very impressive. Um, you know, he was beating the shit out of Pat Sabatini before he got caught in that heel hook. Um, he arguably should have won the uh, Jack Jenkins fight, man, as well, um, you know, which was a split decision. So um, it was a very close fight. And uh, then he beat a, uh, he also beat a 23 and 0 Russian guy, you know, knock, he knocked out Dennis Bazooka in less than, in less than a minute, you know, which is more than Sean Woodson can do. Um, his takedown defense looks good, uh, throws a lot of oblique kicks as well and calf kicks. He wasn't backing straight up. He was, you know, really good at angling off, um, uses his reach well, you know, throwing nice long shots, nasty straight right hand, uses his jab very well. Um, his head movement looked improved in that, in that fight with the Russian guy, um, you know, the cardio seems to be on point. He's going to have a three and a half inch reach advantage. Um, eight wins by knockout, three wins by submission. And uh, throws, yeah, throws great combinations, great at managing distance, and, and great at staying just out of the way and countering. Uh, great timing and footwork. He's more technical. He's going to have a speed advantage here. Um, he's very underrated, man, and, and he's very good everywhere. Uh, great takedown defense. I, I think I might have said that already. Um, you know, he shows 48% striking accuracy with 58% striking defense. Uh, 41% takedown accuracy with 91% takedown defense. Uh, Nate's gonna be not gonna be able to take him down, I don't believe. Um, and Emmer's averages almost basically two takedowns per 15 minutes. Um, he lands on average 5.10 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.79. Uh, the only bad thing I have to say about Emmer's is he has missed weight. You know, uh, I don't know if it was th- that was the only time that he missed weight last time out. Um, I think he can take the fight anywhere he wants here as long as he doesn't, you know, doesn't. Uh, you know, get tired and gas out. I think he's got this fight uh, in the bag. He's very accurate, and uh, you know, I think he's going to get another win here, probably by a. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I I'll go with TKO round two. Uh, maybe he uh, maybe he 
catches Nate with a nice straight shot like he did, you know, Bazooka and drops him. Um, Because I have seen Nate, you know, in some of his other fights, like in the David Onama fight, you know, Onama caught him with a good shot and dropped him flat out. And then Onama jumped on him and hit him again. And it was like he woke him back up. Um, It was nice to see that Emmers, you know, whenever he dropped Bazooka like that, um, you know, he was able to kind of like stand back off a little bit after, you know, he knew he was done. He didn't just keep hitting him and wake him back up, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm taking Embers to win by round two TKO. Next up, we got Bill Algio taking on Kyle Nelson. And uh, Bill Algio is 34 years old, coming up on 35, uh, six foot tall with a 73 inch reach. He is 18 and seven and five and three in the UFC, and he's a minus 198 favorite. Uh, four wins by knockout, seven wins by submission. Um, he's never been knocked out, but has been submitted twice. Uh, but but he has never been finished in the UFC either. Um, very tall and, and long for the weight class. He's gonna have a two inch reach advantage. Uh, good at using his reach, keeps his hands very low, which makes the uh, which makes the head kick available. You know, Andre Feely hit him a few times with head kicks in their fight. Uh, he has great cardio. Um, he has a win over uh, Joe Anderson Brito, which is impressive. Uh, kind of a karate type style striking. Throws great knees. Uh, you know, kicks with his lead leg a lot. Kind of throws people off. Uh, switches stances a lot. Good at good at fighting from both ways. Uh, good at hide, good at hiding his kicks with his punches. Uh, throws a lot of spinning attacks from distance. Um, you know, good at fighting at range. You know, and 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 fighting long. Um, I think he has a lot of advantages in this fight. You know, um, you know, uh, and just uh, and you know, on how he approaches this fight really is kind of you know what it depends on. Um, he shows fifty two percent striking accuracy with forty seven percent striking defense. Uh, forty-seven percent takedown accuracy with fifty-six percent takedown defense. Um, he averages almost one takedown per fifteen minutes, and he lands on average six point eleven strikes per minute while absorbing four point forty-one. And he's taking on Kyle Nelson. He is uh thirty-two years old, five eleven, with a seventy-one inch reach, and uh, he's fifteen five and one and three four and one in the UFC, and he's a plus one sixty-four underdog. And uh, let me start by saying that, you know, Nelson shouldn't have won his last fight, and and, and the du- the Duho Choi fight shouldn't have been a draw. Nelson lost that fight. Um, he has made improvements. You can tell his cardio has gotten a lot better. Does hit very hard. Uh, good at covering up and deflecting shots. But you know, I've watched his last fight like twice in the last two or three weeks, and uh, he shouldn't have won that fight, man. You know, he may have a he may have a power advantage with his hands, but Algio is the better striker. Uh, Nelson's best shot would probably be to look for takedowns because on the feet, he's going to get ate up from the outside by Bill. Uh, Nelson's wrestling isn't the greatest, but neither is Bill's takedown defense, so you never know what could happen there. Um, I don't think Nelson has many advantages in this fight. He shows 45% striking accuracy with 53% striking defense, uh, 21% takedown accuracy, uh, which kind of kills the idea of him getting the takedowns on Algio. Um, He has 73% takedown defense, and he lands on average 3.46 strikes per minute. While absorbing 4.56, so gets get hits more. Uh, he gets hit. Ugh, he gets hit more than he lands. Uh, I'm taking Bill Algio to win this fight. Um, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna hit Nelson with a big shot, drop him, and then jump on a choke of some sort and win by submission in round two. Sorry if I'm. Not, I can't even talk right today, guys. I'm still still tired, trying to get used to the new schedule. Um, but uh, we got Melissa Gatto taking on Victoria Dudakova. And uh, Melissa Gatto is 28 years old. Um, she is 5'5 five, five with a 69 inch reach. She is 8'2 two and 2 and 2 and 2 in the UFC. And she's a minus 148 favorite. Uh, two wins by knockout, four wins by submission. Um, she's never been finished. Uh, she's coming off a split decision loss to Ariana Lipsky. Uh, very close fight. She could have won that fight. Um, she has a win over Carol Rosa right before the UFC, which is a pretty good win. Um, she was primarily known for her grappling before the UFC, but, you know, she came into the UFC and got two finishes with her striking. Um, I honestly think she's very good, and, and I don't think we've really seen the best of her yet. Uh, quick hands, strong in the clinch, you know, nice inside trips, very aggressive on the ground, um, throws up submission after submission, uh, very good jiu-jitsu. Uh, she has nice sweeps from the bottom. Uh, she has a good reach for the weight class. She's going to have a two-inch reach advantage. Uh, throws a nice jab, nice one-two. Uh, she broke Victoria Leonardo's arm with a... Uh, with a kick in her debut. Uh, they never said that for sure that that's what caused it, but I saw the kick and I'm pretty sure that, 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 uh, that's what, that's what happened. So I, I consider that a, uh, 
I consider that a win with striking in my book. Um, and then, uh, then she stops Sajar, uh, Sajar Eubanks with a body kick after that. So she has powerful kicks, man. And, you know, now Dudakova is coming up a weight class here, uh, probably because she missed weight in her last fight. Uh, so these are, these two are the same height, but I'm willing to bet that Gato is going to be the much bigger, stronger, you know, fighter muscle wise. Uh, Gato does look very cut up and strong always. And, uh, she has great shoulder pressure from, from top position. Uh, Gato shows 49% striking accuracy with 55% striking defense, uh, 21% takedown accuracy with 64% takedown defense. And, uh, that's probably cause she's not really scared to go to her, you know, go on, go to her back with a lot of people. Um, she averages 1.18 takedowns per 15 minutes and she lands on average 3.98 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.13. Um, I think Gato has a big advantage on the ground here. Um, as far as the striking, it could be pretty close. Dudakova looks like her strike is pretty sharp, but uh, uh, Dudakova is 25 years old. She has 5'5 five, five with a 67 inch reach. She is 8 0 and 2 0 in the UFC. Uh, plus 124 underdog, two wins by knockout, four wins by submission. Uh, so in her debut, we didn't really get to see much because her opponent's arm got dislocated, you know, trying to post on the takedown. Uh, then in her second fight, she took on uh, Jin Frey who was on a three fight losing streak at the time, um, you know, and didn't really look all that impressive against her. Uh, she's undefeated, but hasn't really fought anybody I would consider, you know, good competition yet. Um, I guess her win on the contender series is over an eight, no fighter. Um, but you know, not a UFC level eight, no fighter. Uh, she seems well-rounded, um, but Frey was stuffing the takedowns in her last fight. And, uh, you know, she was out landing Frey, but it was a pretty close fight. And um, she does dip her head down a lot. I expect Gato to be looking for looking for shots up the middle, like front kicks, knees, uppercuts, all that stuff. Uh, she seems to have nice power on her shots. She doesn't overthrow or swing wide. Um, everything's pretty straight and tight punches. Um, I would imagine that if that if uh, Jinya Frey could get her down, Gato may have success in that area as well. Um, she looked a lot smaller than Jinya Frey in that fight, and Gato's way bigger than Frey is. So I expect due to COVID to look pretty small, um, uh, against, against Gato. Um, so yeah, due to has great cardio, powerful kicks, fast punches, uh, goes to the body a lot. Uh, she may have the advantage in the striking if her skills follow her up a weight class, but, uh, you know, not, not enough fights yet for me to like go over her stats and, and try to compare that. Um, out in the open, Gato should, you know, just kind of slam kicks to the body, use her reach. Um, I would imagine Gato will eventually get it to the ground. Uh, I was really hoping that Gato would be the, you know, would be the underdog. It seems like the, the obvious thing sometimes for, for people to, you know, want to put their money on the undefeated Russian. Uh, but I guess the, uh, I guess the, the bookmakers are, are hip to it. And, uh, either way I'm taking, I would be taking Gato to get the win. Um, as far as a method of victory, either probably by late submission or decision, um, I do think that she might be able to bully Dudakova around a little bit, get a few takedowns. Um, everyone on Tapology is going with Dudakova. Uh, I don't agree with that. So either way, I got Gato. Uh, I'll, I'll go with by decision. Next, we got Ibo Aslan taking on Anton Turkal. And uh, Aslan is 27 years old, coming up on 28. He's 6'3 with a 77 and a half inch reach. He is 12 and 1, and this is going to be his UFC debut. Uh, he's a minus 135 favorite. Um, all of his wins have been by knockout. Uh, his one loss is by submission. And uh, this is why you got to look into these fights, you know, whenever you're thinking about betting on things. Because uh, after looking into this fight, uh, the line does make sense now. I was wondering, like, how come Aslan's not, you know, a huge favorite or whatever. Uh, but Aslan's only loss was to the same guy he's fighting right now, Anton, you know, Turkal. Um, I see why he's only a slight favorite. Um, obviously, that obviously the the weak part of his game is, um, you know, his submission defense or whatever. He's a big knockout puncher, and and Anton is only good with 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 his grappling, really. So. Uh, but aside from aside from Anton, who hasn't had any success in the UFC, the only good person that that Aslan has fought was the guy he beat on the Contender Series, um, who was way smaller than him. Uh, most of his wins have been in the first round, so I wonder about his cardio. Um, he's fought a lot of guys with losing records. Um, has two finishes via leg kick, which is he does have really nice leg kicks. Um, obviously, huge power. Uh, has good high kicks for a big guy. Um, you know, going back and watching the last time these guys fought three years ago, 
Um, Aslan was, you know, getting the better of the striking, uh, but he kept going into the clinch, you know, and then he took Anton down. He basically beat the crap out of Anton the whole first round, you know, except at the very end, Anton was able to get back to his feet and he landed a few shots. Um, second round, uh, he dropped Anton with the leg kick. Um, Aslan looked gassed, you know, let Anton back to his feet. And then Anton caught him off guard. I think, I think uh, Aslan missed a kick or something and kind of had his back turned for a second. And Anton caught him off guard and ran up on him and got a takedown immediately and immediately locked in the choke. Kind of took the back with a trip and landed on the back and already had the choke in, you know, by the time he was on the ground. Um, and it's a tough fight to pick because of that, you know. I mean, Aslan was dominating the whole fight, but, but had bad cardio and, and made one mistake and Anton, you know, got him. Um, and, you know, you got to think that, you know, even even looking at like Anton's, you know, uh, like his his you know body in that fight, you know, he was kind of chubby, you know, kind of had a lot of fat on him and stuff like that. Didn't look anything like he looks now. Um, I'm sure he's made a ton of improvements since then. Since then, um, so it's really kind of hard to pick, man, because you know that that he's done it before, you know, and that's the weak part of Aslan's game. So. Uh, and uh, Turkal is 27 years old. He is 6'4 with a 78 inch reach. He's 8 and 3 and 0 and 3 in the UFC. And he's a uh, plus, plus 114 underdog. Uh, five wins by knockout, two wins by submission. Um, he was primarily known for his grappling and his wrestling. You know, had a very long amateur career as well. Uh, he's tough. He went to a decision with Vitor Petrino. Um, his striking isn't very good. Um, Aslan's going to have the advantage, you know, all the way there. But if Anton can get. Aslan down and be on top. He's way better than, you know, there all day. I don't think Aslan would be able to get back up. Um, he also has the better cardio. You know, if he can get the fight out of the first round, he has a great chance to win this fight. Um, he's fought the way tougher competition, has the UFC experience advantage, you know, half inch reach advantage as well. Um, his striking has gotten a lot better since the first time they fought, but I still think Aslan's going to have the advantage there. Um, I feel like I'm going to look stupid no matter which way I decide to go, you know, because if Anton wins, you know, everybody's going to say, duh, you know, he beat him before. And, and if Aslan wins, everybody's going to say, duh, Anton sucks. He hasn't gotten a win in the UFC. So, um, I'm interested to see where this, where this line goes after people start realizing that Anton beat this guy already. Um, you know, when, when the, when these guys come in, you know, from the contender series and they aren't, they aren't complete fighters, you know, and say they have bad cardio or bad takedown defense or whatever, you know, they do tend to get exposed, man. And, and this could be one of those times, um, you know, I honestly don't know. You know, normally in a situation like this, I would say take the dog. Uh, let me know what you guys think, please, in the comments and everything. You know, give me your opinion because I'm really on the fence about this one. Um, and I don't know. I still haven't made, quite made a decision on this, man. Um, I guess, man, I guess I'll go with uh, for now, you know, depending on where the line goes. Um, I guess for now I'll go with the salon, but um, if he winds up being like a gigantic favorite, um, you know, I'll probably switch the pick and take the big plus money on Turkal. But right now the line's pretty close. Uh, so, you know, for now I'll go with the salon, but uh, if Turkal ends up being a giant favorite, like I said, I'll probably jump on that. If he's like a plus 200, plus 250, probably switch the pick and take the, take the value, you know, on the dog. Um, everybody on Tapology is going with the salon but they probably aren't even aware that these guys fought before. So we'll see what happens. Um, next up, we got Julio Arce taking on Herbert Burns. I'll grab some water real quick. <clears throat> so uh, Julio Arce is 34 years old. He's 5'7 with a 70-inch reach. He is 18-6 and six and 5-4 and four in the UFC. And he's a minus 500 favorite. Uh, five wins by knockout, five wins by submission. Uh, this guy beat Dan Ige in his debut, uh, knocked out Julian Arosa with a head kick, uh, went to split decision with Hakeem Dawadu. Um, he's only lost to really tough guys. So, I mean, what I'm saying is, you know, if anybody doesn't know, this guy's, you know, he's with the shit, man. He's tough for sure. You know, um, he's no joke, you know, at, at any weight class. He is going up a weight class here. Um, he had a very close fight with Montel Jackson last time out, you know, as a big underdog. Um, he's only been finished once in the UFC, and it was by Song Yudong. Um, yeah, he will, like I said, he's going up to featherweight here and, and it may be a good move for him. You know, he won't be torturing himself to get, you know, the weight on the weight cuts and, um, has great striking fights, mostly Southpaw, you know, good at establishing the jab. And that's the first thing he does in a fight. 
Um, and and I, like I said before, man, I know I say that about a lot of fighters. You know, y'all hear me say he uses his jab well, you know, um, quite often on, on the fights when I'm breaking them down. And it's just because that's one of the first things I look for, you know, as, as far as, you know, their their level of striking and how good their striking is, is, you know, do they use their jab well? Do they set up their jab? Do they fight long? You know, um, and uh, where was I at? Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, good at establishing the jab, uh, great head movement. Um, I like how in the uh, in the Santos fight, he was avoiding most of the shots, even when he was backing up against the cage. And, and he was kind of getting unloaded on, but he was like avoiding them all, covering up moving his head out the way, and then he would just start popping Santos with that jab and, you know, doubling up the jab, tripling it up, using great footwork. And and he would throw the straight left and come over the top with the kick, you know, um, really kind of hides the kick, you know, when he throws the left in front of it like that. Um, throws, a ni- throws nice straight shots. Uh, he knows when to uh, he knows when to put power on his shots as well. You know, he doesn't throw everything at full force. Uh, great counter striking, great front kicks to the liver. Um, on the feet, he has the advantages all day here. Um, he has way better cardio as well as, uh, has, he has a lot of late finishes on his record. So the power carries over into the third, um, he shows 36% striking accuracy with 68% striking defense, which is a, a good number there. Um, he shows 31% takedown accuracy with 95% takedown defense, uh, which is great since Burns, Burns is going to look to take him down. That's what Burns does. Um, and, uh, and Arce lands on average 4.38 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.10. And he's uh, he's taking on Herbert Burns. He is 36 years old. He is five nine with a 74 inch reach. He is 11 and four and two and two in the UFC. And he's a plus 380 underdog. Uh, one win by knockout, eight wins by submission. Uh, has never been submitted himself. And uh, he's been finished in his last two fights. And I, I can't believe he's still in the UFC after that embarrassing performance he had last time out. Um, completely gassed out, was just laying there on his back, you know, too exhausted to fight. Um, you know, he does have the have great grappling, high level jujitsu for sure. Um, he will be the bigger fighter here, a few inches taller. Uh, and he's going to have a four inch reach advantage. Uh, but you know, he he has less than one round of cardio. You know, we've seen it, we've seen it a few times. Um, I don't see how anyone could put money on him. You know, after after his last performance, um, he is very aggressive off of his back. He constantly attacks submissions. Um, he hasn't fought in close to two years and I don't think that's going to help his cardio either. Um, as long as Arce pays attention and doesn't make any mistakes, doesn't follow Burns to the ground, he should win this fight. Um, Arce hasn't been submitted since 2016. So, uh, Burns shows 51% striking accuracy with 31% striking defense, uh, which is, yeah, which is, uh, you know, one of the worst I've seen as far as a striking defense goes. Um, 75% takedown accuracy with 60% takedown defense. Um, he averages almost four takedowns per 15 minutes, uh, but Arce has 95% takedown defense. So, uh, and Burns lands only, um, he lands on average only 1.61 strikes per minute while absorbing 4.74, which is really bad. Uh, gets hit like, you know, over twice the amount that he lands. Um, I'm taking Arce to win this fight by TKO round two. I think he'll probably play it safe. You know, Burns might. Burns might be really trying to get those takedowns early and, and tire himself out. Once he gets tired, our sales start, you know, unloading on him, beating him up with that jab, uh, probably go to the body with some shots and end up, you know, getting a TKO in the second round. Next up, we got Chitty Ninja Kawani taking on Reese McKee. So there are some factors that go into my decision on this fight uh, that I'll explain. Uh, Cause I know a lot of people are going to be like, what the hell are you doing? You know, but, uh, um, Njikawani is 35 years old. He is six, three with an 80 inch reach. He is 22 and 10 and two and three in the UFC. He's a minus two eighteen favorite, uh, 14 wins by knockout one win by submission. Um, he's been knocked out five times and submitted three times. Um, which is most of his, most of his losses. Um, I like Chitty. I'm a fan. I've always wanted to see him do well. Um, but let's face it, man, he does have pretty bad cardio and, and he, he has, he's a high level Muay Thai striker, great with his elbows and knees, very strong in the clinch, uh, very tall and long. He's going to have a two inch reach advantage and, uh, you know, Tapology, um, Tapology has this fight at middleweight, but on UFC.com it has it at welterweight. Uh, now which weight class this is, is a big factor in this fight to me because I could see McKee looking better up at 185, you know, cause he's a big guy. Uh, but Chitty, you know, and, and, and since, since the UFC.com says this is going to be at welterweight, welterweight, I'm going to, 
I'm going to trust them and say that if, that Chitty's trying to get down to 170, um, which is kind of a lot for him to be jumping down to. He's a pretty big guy. Um, if Chitty was gassing out at 185 pounds and less than a round, then how do you think he's going to do after cutting an extra 15 pounds? That's just my opinion, which I wish I really knew for sure, for sure. I'm just going, I'm going to go with what UFC.com says in my, in my decision. Um, I know Chitty is the better striker, may even have a power advantage. At least he did at 185. Um, he's facing a guy here who is close to the same size as him. You know, Chitty is an amazing, amazing fighter, but you know, his fights tend to go one of three ways. Either he gets a quick knockout early, um, or he, he has a good start. Then he, then he fades and gets finished. Or like we saw in the Dariah fight, he was so worried about the takedowns that he didn't do anything. Um, I mean, Chitty already looks like, looks like he doesn't have any fat on him at all. You know, when he fights, I don't know where the extra 15 pounds is going to come from if he drops down. Um, he uses great teep kicks, fights very long, good at using his reach. Uh, so fast and accurate, man. Great kicks. Uh, really beats guys up from the outside with those. And, and uh, his weaknesses have always been his takedown defense and submission awareness and defense. Um, and his last fight, he started strong and, and then got overwhelmed by the pressure of old Zaychek. Um, you know, Chitty's going to have a, have to get a quick finish here or, uh, or I don't know if it'll go, uh, if it'll go well for him, man, especially cutting extreme 15 pounds. Um, Chitty shows 61% striking accuracy with 53% striking defense, uh, 0% takedown accuracy. I don't, I don't know if he's ever even shot a takedown, um, in the UFC anyway. And uh, 68% takedown defense. Um, he lands on average 4.04 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.19. And uh, he has an average fight time of 8 minutes and 12 seconds, which is uh, both bad and good because some of those are losses, you know. <laughs> but uh, he's taking on Reese McKee. He is 28 years old. He is 6'2 with a 78 inch reach. He is 13 5 and 1 and 0 and 3 in the UFC. He's a plus 180 underdog. Um, all of his wins have been by finish, 10 knockouts and three wins by submission. Um, he's never been submitted. Um, the only person to finish him recently was Konzat Chemaev back in 2020. Um, after that, he lost a decision to Alex Morono, and he was cut from the UFC. Um, he went back to Cage Warriors and got three knockouts in a row. You know, his first fight back, he fought Angelusa, and yeah, you know, Ange, Ange put a beating on him, but, uh, you know, he lost the first two rounds, but in the third round, you know, he showed that he has good cardio, and he and he won the third round. He was landing some good shots. Kind of, kind of scared me because I had money on Lusa. You know, I thought Reese might be able to get a late knockout there. Um, yeah. So, uh, 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 the way the way he fights is he will often just kind of pick and poke at guys, and then go harder and harder as the fight goes on. Uh, that's why he has a, you know quite a few late knockouts on his record. Um, he uses reach well. His takedown defense in the past hasn't looked very good, but I don't think Chitty is going to be trying to take him down. That's not how he fights. Um, and that's actually the one area where McKee may have an advantage. Um, I'm not saying that McKee's wrestling and grappling is very good, but it's probably better than Chitty's is. Um, he throws nice, nice combinations when he gets going. Um, if he fights smart here, I think he could win this fight. I, I know he's at a disadvantage in the striking early, but if he can go out and, and make Chitty defend takedowns and really wear on him, um, you know, try to get him down, tire Chitty out, then go to the striking, then start pressuring, you know, and, and, and kind of overwhelm him. I feel like that's a good game plan for him. Uh, but you know, as far as the as far as my pick on this fight, guys, it's the deal is, is if it's at 170, I'm taking McKee. Um, I won't get very invested in it, but I but I don't think Chitty's going to look good after cutting even more weight. Um, but if it's up at 185, you know, I may switch the pick to shit to uh, Chitty. Um, but even at 185, Chitty's cardio has looked bad. So you know, there's always a chance McKee could just outlast him and get a win here. Um, you know, cutting less weight might benefit McKee even more if it's up at 185. So you just never know. But uh, since it says it, it's out welterweight on UFC.com, and I'm going to take McKee to win this fight um, by third round, third round knockout, or maybe second round. Uh, and that's just not based on that's not based on McKee's skills as much as it it's based on Chitty's cardio. So um, you know, I think Chitty's let me down three times in a row now. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't. I know I had I had Gregory Rodriguez against him, but the Albert Dariah fight, I lost money on him. Uh, the old Zaychek fight, lost money on him. So, yeah, <laughs> I'll take McKee if it's at one seventy. Next up, we got Angel uh, Pacheco taking on Callan Lauren. And sometimes I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but uh, Angel 
is 32 years old. He is 5'8 with a 70 inch reach. He is 7 and 2, and this is going to be his UFC debut. Uh, he's a plus 235 underdog. And uh, where was I at? Four wins by knockout, three wins by submission. Um, he's never been finished as a pro anyway, and he's coming off a very entertaining fight on the Contender Series where he lost to Daniel Sil- or Danny Silva, but they both got the contract. Um, he fights with a very boxing-heavy approach, lots of dirty boxing and fighting in the pocket. Uh, very fast hands, throws nice combinations. You know, up until up until his fight on the Contender Series, he hadn't really fought anybody good though. And uh, you know, we won't know. I guess we are. We just found out that you know Danny Silva's a tough guy because he beat Cooley Bow. So. Um, you know, he did, uh, uh, Angel did get taken down a few times in his fight on the Contender Series, and you know, he did land at a high volume, man. You know, almost 200 strikes in that fight, even though he lost. So, I mean, fairly competitive, and he throws a lot more volume than than his opponent here. Um, he may have the better hands, you know, than than Lau Ran, but, you know, also, also uh, Angel's last fight was up a weight class, so we're going to get to see him here at 135. You know, he may look better. Um He's going to be taller. He's got a two-inch reach advantage. Uh, I'd rather see Angel win this fight, but his takedown defense is probably going to you know, be what cost him this fight. Um, he's taking on Callan Loran. He is 27 years old, 5'6", uh, with a 68-inch reach. He is 8-1 and one and 0-1 oh and in the UFC, and uh, he's a minus 290 favorite. Uh, five wins by knockout, two wins by submission. He's never been finished. Uh, there was a lot of hype on this guy coming into the UFC. You know, He looked great on, uh, on Cage Warriors. Um, but he didn't look all that great in his debut, but he was fighting a really high level guy. So we can forgive him there. You know, he, 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 he knew he was going to get outstruck by Taylor Lapalus. So he ended stuck with his wrestling and he got a lot of takedowns, just didn't do anything with them. You know, didn't do any damage. Uh, so we ended up losing the decision. Uh, he does hit very hard. You know, he may have a power advantage here, but as far as the boxing, it could be very close. Um, he does, however, have a big, big advantage here with his wrestling and, and, and this fight and, uh, I expect that to come into play here. You know, he's fought the tougher competition. He's got the better wins. Um, he has more experience. Uh, he had a long amateur career as well. Um, you know, I don't really think he's as great as everyone made him out to be coming into the UFC, but I do think he wins this fight, you know, using his wrestling. He has that option um, if it's not going his way on the feet. So uh, I'm going to take Lauren to win by, um, by decision. Next up, we got Connor Matthews taking on Dennis Bazooka. And Connor Matthews is 31 years old. He is 5'8 with a 71 inch reach. He is 7 and 1, and this is going to be his UFC debut. Uh, he's a slight underdog, plus 105. Um, one win by knockout, five wins by submission. Uh, he's never been finished. He's coming off a win on the contender series over a 10 0 guy. You know, it was a nice win. Um, he did lose his first shot on the contender series to Francis Marshall. Um, lots of first round finishes on his record. He trains with the New England cartel. Um, the last guy he beat was a kickboxing champion. Um, so that says something there. Um, he's going to have a half inch reach advantage in this fight. He's a Taekwondo black belt. Uh, seems very strong and powerful for the weight class. Uh, nice trips and body lock takedowns. Um, really good at taking the back and backpacking guys and getting the rear naked choke. Uh, lots of wins by rear naked choke on his record. Um, he can definitely take a shot. He ate some shots in his last fight and kept coming. Uh, nice body kicks to the liver. Good single legs. Uh, doesn't have the fastest striking, but he is good at seeing the openings, you know, when they're available and taking advantage of that. Um, I would say he definitely has an advantage in the grappling in this fight. He pushes a tough pace. Um, but, you know, based on what we've seen, we haven't seen much out of him at a high level yet. So I couldn't really, you know, I couldn't really say for sure, you know, the level, you know, what, how is, uh, how he's going to look in the UFC, you know, based on the competition that he's faced uh, so far. But I, I do think he's uh, got a good shot at winning this fight. Um, he's taking on Dennis Bazooka. He is 26 years old. He is 5'9 with a 70 and a half inch reach. He's 11 and 4 and 0 and 2 in the UFC. He's a minus 125 favorite. Uh, four wins by knockout, one win by submission. Um, he has lost every time he faced UFC level competition. Um, he lost to uh, Melzik Bagdasari in his first time on the Contender Series back in 20. 20- Back in 2020, I think is when it was. Um, you know, then he won his second time in the Contender Series by decision. Still didn't get a contract. And uh, to be fair, his two fights in the UFC, though, have been over really tough top- competition. Uh, Sean Woodson and, and Jamal Emmers. Um, but he showed holes in, you know, everywhere in those fights. And, you know, this is definitely... This is definitely kind of a fight that's much more on, you know, uh, his level of competition. 
uh, here, you know, rather than his last two fights. Um, he may be the better striker, more technical, faster, but he is coming off a really fast knockout loss. Um, how will that affect him? You know, uh, will he not take as many chances? We don't know. Um, he looked great on the regional scene against lower level competition, but I just haven't seen anything recently that, that leads me to believe that he's going to destroy, you know, Connor Matthews here. Um, could be a close fight guys. I, I don't have a super strong lean either way. Um, just to, other than, other than, uh, I like what I saw out of Connor, you know, more his last time out. Uh, and I like the prize. So as far as uh, a pick here, I'm going to go with the dog. I'll take Connor Matthews to win by decision. Next up, we got Andre Petrosky taking on Jacob Malkoon. And uh, Petrosky is 32 years old. He is six foot tall with a 73 inch reach. He is 10 and two and five and one in the UFC. And he's a plus 170 underdog. And uh, I was kind of hoping he would be a favorite on the betting line here because uh, he's a favorite on Tapology to win this fight. Uh, but he's not, so whatever. Um, I've never really been high on Petrosky. Most of his wins in the UFC have been over, haven't been over good competition uh, or, just, or just haven't been that impressive, like going to a split decision with Mearshart, you know. Um, he's got good grappling, nice takedowns, great jiu-jitsu, but his striking is terrible, and you can... You can always tell that he's really uncomfortable, you know, on the feet in the striking, especially against high-level strikers. Um, he's taller, but these guys have the same reach, so no advantage there. Uh, both these guys are considered grapplers, man. That's how they fight. Uh, Petrosky loads up way too much on his punches, swings very wide and huge hooks, you know. Um, not very technical on the feet. Uh, does, does, uh, doesn't really have anything off of his back we've seen in the past. Um, he has four wins by knockout, four wins by submission. Um, all of his losses have been by knockout. Uh, which isn't a good look, but uh, and I, I don't really think his cardio is very good either. He seemed really tired in the third round against Gerald Mearshart. Um, he just got knocked out super quick, you know, in his last fight by Michelle Pereira. Uh, so I, you know, know how that's going to affect him either. Um, but he does show 52% striking accuracy with 52% striking defense, uh, 55% takedown accuracy with 71% takedown defense. And uh, he averages 4.48 takedowns per 15 minutes, and he lands on average 3.61 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.03. And uh, he's taking on Jacob Malkoon. He is 28 years old, 5'9 uh, with a 73-inch reach. He is 7-3 and 3-3 and three and three in the UFC, and he's a minus 205 favorite. Uh, he has two wins by knockout, never won or lost a fight by submission. Um, he has some boxing uh, in, in his background, but I believe he was... Uh, I think at one point he was Robert Whitaker's wrestling or jiu-jitsu coach at one point. Um, he has amazing wrestling, gets everybody down. Not a lot of finishes, though. Uh, he doesn't really go for submissions like that. He kind of chooses the uh, – he's more of a position over submission type of guy, you know. Um, but a lot of people thought he won the Brendan Allen fight, you know, and, and even I did. And I thought, you know, he I thought he was going to win that decision. Um, and he was destroying Cody Brundage last time out, you know, before he got disqualified for an illegal shot. You know, um, stuff like that's been happening a lot lately. You know, people losing, been able to find their way out of fights. Um, and, and he cost everybody a lot of money with that. Um, but uh, he is kind of short for the weight class. I do think he has the better striking than Petrosky does, uh, since he does have a little bit of boxing in his background. Um, he likes to punch his way into the into the clinch and grab the body lock, get the takedowns. Uh, doesn't really go for double legs that much, but will grab a single and get the trip. Um, it is possible that since both these guys fight the same way, it may cancel each other out and it may play out on the feet. Um, Jacob has great sweeps, uh, good at using his, uh, butterfly guard to, to, to get back on his feet. Uh, great ground and pound. Now he's going to have the cardio advantage for sure. Uh, Petrosky has the power advantage in the striking, but Malkoon has, you know, the, the better, faster hands in my opinion. Um, and it's close on the ground, man, but most likely the cardio will, you know, prevail in my opinion for, for Malkoon. Um, you know, he shows 57% uh, striking accuracy with 51% striking defense, 44% uh, takedown accuracy. Uh, they don't have his takedown defense listed on UFC.com. I don't know if that's because he's never been taken down or because no one's tried to take him down. Um, and he uh, he averages 7.20 takedowns per 15 minutes. It's a lot. And uh, he lands on average 3.89 strikes per minute while absorbing 2.49. Um could throw more volume, but doesn't get hit, you know, all that much. Uh, I'm going to be taking Malkoon to win this fight by decision, possibly a late finish on a on a gassed out Petrosky, but uh, uh, for now, I'll be going with uh, with a decision. 
<clears throat> Next up, we got Nurnosultan Ruzabov. Rizboyev. I think that's how you say it right. <laughs> uh, Nurnosultan Rezboyev taking on Cedricus Dumas. And, uh, and uh, Nurnosultan is 30 years old. He is 6'5 with a 76 inch reach. Uh, thirty three and eight, thirty or thirty three eight and two. Sorry, and one and zero oh in the UFC. He's a minus three ten favorite. Uh, this guy's a giant man, very tall. Uh, not as long as of a, of a reach as you would expect for a guy that tall. Um, but this guy came into the UFC with a ton of experience. He's on a nine fight win streak. Uh, this guy's fought all over the world. Um, he's only been finished twice in over forty fights. It's very impressive. Um, he has eleven wins by knockout, twenty wins by submission. Uh, all but two of his wins have been by finish, man. That's a lot of finishes. Uh, so it's fair to say that he's pretty well-rounded and he's a monster, man. And uh, made light work of, of the guy who knocked out Gregory Rodriguez, you know, in his debut. Um, he started training karate at 11 years old. Couldn't find much more information about his training and his background, um, you know, on, on, online. But uh, um, has had some boxing fights as well. You know, I watched him knock a guy out with a slam in Brave FC. It was pretty impressive. Um, he's good at using his length. Hits like a truck. Uh, I have seen him taken down a lot in some of the tape I watch, but he's good about avoiding damage and, and he'll use his Kimura to sweep and get back to his feet. Um, you know, but his limbs are so long that he's dangerous with the submissions everywhere, man. And, you know, you have to find, you have to find most of his stuff on YouTube. If you're, if you're going back and trying to watch the tape and a lot of it is written in Russian. So I wasn't exactly sure, you know, which fights I was watching or which opponents, you know, or when they were. Um, but there are a lot of them on there. And, uh, you know, great knees. He has he's a lot of wins with knees, man. He's very good because he's so tall with his knees and and great ground and pound. Um, has some kickboxing fights as well. He's done it all, and uh, he has many advantages in this fight, man. I think he may be better everywhere, honestly. And uh, you know, he's had a long, long, full career to develop his skills. Whereas Dumas, you know, just got thrown around by Josh Fremd a few fights ago. So um, I would say that you know Ruzabov definitely has the uh, the better skill set here. And he's taking on Cedricus Dumas. He is 28 years old. He is 6'2 with a 79-inch reach. 9-1 um, and 2-1 and and in the UFC. And he's a plus 250 underdog. Uh, four wins by knockout, two wins by submission. He's going to have a 3-inch reach advantage. Uh, I just don't... I just don't think much so far of, of Dumas. The guys he's beaten so far in the UFC probably shouldn't be in the UFC anymore. Uh, Dumas is still developing parts of his game, you can tell. But he has been getting better and better. Uh, he has decent striking, big power. You can tell he's been working on his wrestling a lot after his debut. Um, I expect him to look for takedowns in this fight as well. Uh, that's really the only weaknesses I've seen watching the tape on on Ruzabov. But um, you know, like he he won most of those fights even when he was getting taken down anyway. So to be fair, you know. Uh, but uh, outside of Dumas landing a big shot of some sort, I don't really see a good path to victory for him here. Uh, even if he gets the takedowns, he may not be able to keep him down, or he may get reversed. Uh, and submitted so uh, this is a giant jump up in competition for Dumas um, and I'm going to save myself a lot of explaining man and just tell y'all that I'm taking Roosevelt to win by a knockout round two um, yeah I think he's got the skills you know to, to, be, to beat Dumas anywhere man so next up we got Bruno Silva taking on Chris Weidman and uh, Silva is 34 years old he is six foot tall with a seventy four inch reach. He is twenty three and ten, and four and four in the UFC. And uh, he's a minus two sixty five favorite. Uh, twenty wins by knockout. He's never won a fight by submission, but he has been submitted seven times. Um, he's a big knockout puncher. Hits like a truck, you know. But he's the kind of guy to go out and have a a decent fight with Alex Pereira, and then go out next time and get submitted by Gerald Mearshark after he gasses out. So he does have bad cardio. Um, his weaknesses have always been his takedown defense, submission awareness, and defense. Um, he did show a little bit of his wrestling in his last fight, but his opponent had terrible takedown defense. So I'm not really sure if his wrestling improved or if, you know, that guy's takedown defense was just trash. Um, I've told myself a lot of times I would never pick or put money on this guy again. Um, you know, he does, he does have good striking, you know, throws nice calf kicks, does tend to be more kind of a wild striker than rather than smart and technical. Um, he likes to make the fight dirty and, and land a big bomb. You know, um, outside of his power and his striking, he doesn't have a lot of skills, though, man. And uh, Weidman, you know, has a wrestling background and is more well-rounded, but these guys are both 1-4 and four in their last five fights. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of hard to put faith in either of them at this point, really. But uh, 
You know, Silva probably has the striking advantage, the power advantage on the feet. You know, it all comes down to if he can stuff the takedowns or not, really. Uh, Silva shows 52% striking accuracy with 43% striking defense, uh, 28% takedown accuracy with 73% takedown defense. Um, he averages 1.09 takedowns per 15 minutes, supposedly. Uh, he lands on average 4.43 strikes per minute while absorbing 5.33. Um, and he has an average fight time of 8 minutes and 35 seconds. And uh, he's taking on Chris Weidman. He is 39 years old, coming up on 40. Uh, 6'2 with a 78-inch reach. 15-7 uh, and 11-7 and and in the UFC. And he's a plus 215 underdog. You know, former champion, if this fight was some years ago, no doubt Chris would win this fight. Uh, he has six wins by knockout, four wins by submission. Um, he's never been submitted, but has been knocked out six times, man, which makes me, which does push me towards Silva quite a bit. Um, you know, Chris's last fight was his first fight back after the leg injury, and I, I expected Tavares to get a finish, and uh, but Tavares really just kind of threw leg kicks the whole time. Uh, you know, Chris didn't look great, but he was out for two years, so I mean, he does stay real heavy on his lead leg, so the oh, he's open for the leg kicks all the time. Um, he's a two-time division All-American wrestler. He's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. His strengths are Silva's weaknesses, man. That's why I was kind of questioning this fight, you know. But he is up there in age, and and if if he, uh, you know, if he can check the leg kicks this time out and get the takedowns, he can win this fight. Um, I really want to pick him here. I really want him to win. It's just with the compromised leg, I don't know, man. You know, he shows his wrestling didn't really look all that good in his last fight, man. And I don't know if that's because of the leg, you know, um, or or, or what. So. Uh, but he does show 43% striking accuracy with 51% striking defense, uh, 43% takedown accuracy with 65% takedown defense. Um, he averages, sorry, uh, he averages 3.60 takedowns per 15 minutes, and he lands on average 2.98 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.27. Um, I went back and forth on this. I even asked in the Facebook group what, what all these guys thought and, you know, everybody's pretty solidly going with Silva to win by knockout. Uh, I was kind of questioning it because I feel like, you know, Weidman might be able to get the takedowns. Um, but, you know, I, I guess I, I guess I see where everybody's coming from. Uh, I'll take Bruno to win by knockout. Um, I'm not ha happy having to pick him, you know, but like I said, Weidman's wrestling didn't look all that great. Uh, but then again, Tavares has great takedown defense. So, man, there's I don't know, man. I, I was kind of... I'm still kind of torn on this fight, even though everybody's like Silva, 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 but um, I'll take Silva to win. You know, uh, he's looked better than, than Weidman has anyway, you know, recently. So um, yeah, I'll take Silva to win by knockout uh, round one. Next up, we got Berna Janiroba taking on Lupita Godinez. And uh, Janiroba is 35 years old, coming up on 36. Uh, five three with a sixty four inch reach. She is nineteen and three and five and three in the UFC, and she's a plus one fifty underdog. Uh, one win by knockout, thirteen wins by submission. Uh, she's never been finished. Her best win was over Marina uh, Rodriguez, and uh, yeah, Verna's a you know super high level grappler, great jujitsu. Although she hasn't gotten a submission lately over anybody good anyway. Uh, she usually just kind of wins fights on control time. Uh, doesn't have very good striking at all, but has great takedowns, good double legs and trip takedowns. Uh, very good at taking the back and, and very hard to get off you when she's on there. Uh, good head and arm control. Um, heavy top pressure. She's going to have a three-inch reach advantage. Uh, she's probably going to be the bigger, stronger fighter here, but uh, you know, if she can't get the fight to the ground, she'll definitely lose this fight. Uh, she does slow down a bit in the third round as well because she's usually pushing so hard with the takedowns. Uh, you know, there's not much more to Verna's game plan than that, you know, unfortunately for me to say, you know, um, uh, she does show 41% striking accuracy with 57% striking defense, 39% uh, takedown accuracy with 74% takedown defense, and she averages 2.42 takedowns per 15 minutes, and she lands on average 2.34 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.03, um, you know, gets hit, gets hit more than she lands and doesn't land very much because she doesn't have that great striking, so. Um, and she's taking on Lupita Godina. She is 30 years old. She's 5'2 with a 61 inch reach. She is 12 and 3 and 7 and 3 in the UFC. And she's a minus 180 favorite. Uh, she's never won, won a fight by knockout, uh, but three wins by submission. She's never been finished herself. Uh, she does have some questionable losses on her record, but you know, here lately she's been on point. She has great boxing. Um, her wrestling has come a long way. Uh, she's more well rounded than Janiaroba for sure. 
And uh, she has, you know, the way better striking. She throws more kicks. Um, you know, but look, that's basically because Jana Roba doesn't uh, throw a whole lot of kicks at all. But, uh, you know, and, and you know, Godinez is kind of lower to the ground, which gives her, you know, her base um, kind of harder to get to. I don't know if that makes sense, the way I'm describing it. But uh, uh, one thing is, you know, aside from Godinez's last fight, her wins really haven't been over the best of competition lately. And uh, her last fight was real close. Um, she kept her hands up where they're supposed to be. Good defense, uh, nice in and out movement, uh, really good takedown defense, great combinations with the hands. Uh, she wasn't throwing very many kicks in her last fight. And I, I'm not sure if that's just because she is worried about the takedowns or not, but uh, I could see that happening again in this fight. Uh, she probably won't want to, wouldn't want Verna to catch a kick and, and get her down, you know? So, um, but she was landing good knees in close, you know, to the body. Uh, she's very accurate, you know, uses her jab, but, does, but, she uses her jab very well, but follows it up, you know, more importantly, you know, she tends to throw more than one punch at a time. Uh, you know, those, you know, two or three punch combinations, you know, every time, uh, does a great job at cutting off the cage and creating angles. Um, she keeps a high pace. throws a lot of volume. Um, you know, I would honestly like to see someone, you know, try to take Verna down here, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, not a lot of people have tried to take Verna down. Um, and I think, you know, Lupita could possibly, uh, but one thing Lapita does, you know, that will give, you know, Verna problems is Lapita constantly pressures and, and, and pushes forward and, and Verna can't get the takedowns moving backwards. And also, you know, Verna usually has to get people up against the cage to, to take them down. Um, you know, almost always, um, almost always she has to get them up against the cage. I noticed that in her last few fights, uh, you know, Godinez is good at staying off the cage. Um, you know, lots of movement, usually the one pushing forward. Uh, Godinez shows 49% striking accuracy with 62% striking defense. Good number there. Uh, 47% takedown accuracy with 86% takedown defense. Uh, she averages 3.39 takedowns per 15 minutes, and she lands on average 4.31 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.76. Um, and even though she hasn't won a fight by knockout, we have seen her drop and hurt a lot of her opponents, you know, lately. Um, I'm going to be going with Godinez to win this fight by decision. Uh, but it would be cool if she got her first knockout in the UFC. Uh, as far as confidence level, uh, you know, I, I, I could see, I could see a world where Verna Januroba is too big and strong for Godinez. But, uh, but I do think that Godinez is more well-rounded, has more skills, and uh, I'm going to take her to win by decision. Next up, we got the co-main event: Sente Luque taking on Joaquin Buckley, my guy. Uh. Grab some water real quick. So uh, Vicente Luque is 32 years old. He is 5'11 with a 76-inch reach. He is 22-9-1 and 15-5 and and in the UFC. And he's a minus-148 favorite. Uh, you know, I mean, for some reason, I thought Luque had been knocked out a few times in the UFC, but it's only been once. And, uh, you know, Luque is pretty well-rounded. Um, has nice chokes, a lot of wins via Darce choke and Anaconda choke. Um, almost all of his wins in the UFC have been by finish, all but two of them. Um, has 11 wins by knockout, 8 wins by submission. Um, had a little trouble early in his last fight, but eventually took over and kind of used, he kind of used RDA's style against him, you know, but I, I'm not surprised though, really, because, you know, RDA is kind of, is a lightweight, you know, Luke was bigger and stronger and, and it showed, you know, not to mention that RDA has been around a long time. You know, um, you know, Luque shows great cardio, five round cardio. Uh, he throws a lot of great calf kicks, great Muay Thai striking, big power, very fast. Uh, this is a very interesting matchup, man. Um, you know, Buckley used to fight at 185, so I don't think Luque would be able to bully him in the clinch at all. Uh, Luque definitely has the more technical striking, but Buckley has looked better and better recently, man. And uh, Luque, Luque's gotten a lot better at not getting into brawls and taking risk. Um, you know, in his takedown defense, although it looked better in his last fight, is one of the weaker parts of his game. Uh, you know, saw that in the Bilal Muhammad fight. Um, Luque shows 53% striking accuracy with 52% striking defense. 61% uh, takedown accuracy with 63% takedown defense. Uh, he averages one takedown per 15 minutes, and he lands and absorbs about the same amount of strikes per minute at 5.17 and 5.15. Uh, so he does get hit quite a bit. Uh, he's taken on Joaquin Buckley. He is 29 years old, almost 30 now, uh, 5'10", with a 76-inch reach, 17-6, uh, and 7-4 and and in the UFC, and he's a plus-124 underdog. 
Uh, 12 wins by knockout. He's never won or lost a fight by submission, uh, but he has been knocked out a couple times. Uh, Buckley definitely has the advantage with the raw power on his punches, no doubt. Um, and he's looked great down at 170, man. He's looked better and better you know, every time we've seen him and uh, looked better than ever in his last fight, man. And he's very fast and explosive. I could see Luke having trouble with that in this fight. Um, he uses a lot of movement. He stays circling, very powerful kicks, fights southpaw. Um, his head movement looked a lot better in the last fight. Uh, his takedowns were on point, great double legs. His cardio looked great, uh, really good cardio, as a matter of fact. And, uh, you know, sometimes the way he blitzes in with his hooks and his head movement kind of reminds me of Mike Tyson a lot. Uh, I'm not saying that he's quite as good as Mike Tyson was back in the day, but it's still very impressive, and I still, you know, it's really cool to see somebody using that style in MMA. And uh, I like the plus money on him as well, you know, here, man. And uh, he will need to be a little bit more careful when he's blitzing in on Luke because Luke is very accurate. Um, he needs to go out and, and create the angles, draw out Luke's punches with feints and, and counter with his big shots. And, you know, Buckley went harder and harder through the whole fight last time out and was really pouring it on in, in the third round. And, and yeah, man, I love that. And it looked great. And, uh, you know, when he threw that, uh, when he threw that kick and he fell and Morono jumped on on top of him, Buckley just kind of chunked him off and got back up. You know, um, uh, you know he's got nasty ground and pound, and I can tell that uh, I can tell that his numbers on the website aren't quite up to date. But uh, you know they're not a, not impressive as they probably would be. But you know I'm sure they're not much better. But um, but uh, he shows 33% striking accuracy with 58% striking defense. So good defense. Uh, 37% takedown accuracy with 65% takedown defense. Um, he averages one and a half takedowns per 15 minutes, and he lands on average 3.87 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.31. So pretty close to the same there. Does, does get hit about as much as he lands. But uh, I'm going to be taking Buckley to win this fight. I like the plus money. Um, I like the way he looked in his last fight. And, uh, you know, he's the younger guy here by a little bit. You know, he's coming up in his prime. So, I mean... Uh, I'm going with Buckley, man. I'm taking the win by knockout round two. And he'll probably go back and take a look at that Jeff Neal fight, man, and 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 kind of look at how Jeff Neal was able to outbox Luke a and get on the inside and stuff. So I like his odds here, man. I really do. And I'm hoping that the plus money just gets bigger and bigger on him. And next up, we got the main event, man. Uh, Aaron Blanchfield taking on Manon Farreau. Uh, Blanchfield is 24 years old, coming up on 25. She is 5'4 with a 68 inch reach. She is 12 and 1 and 6 and 0 in the UFC. She's a minus 148 favorite. Uh, two wins by knockout, four wins by submission. Uh, the biggest key to this fight for me is that it's five rounds, and I think that helps Aaron Blanchfield, you know, more so than it does Manon Faro, uh, because Faro, you know, especially in her last fight, man, she did enough to win the first two rounds and then tried to run the whole third, and uh, she looked very tired. Um, you know, if that fight with Rose had been five rounds, I think Rose would have won that fight. Um, Aaron has a big advantage with her with her wrestling and jiu-jitsu. Uh, she is certainly the best grappler that Farod has faced so far. Um, Aaron has never been finished. Um, I don't see her getting knocked out here. You know, um, I think at some point she'll probably get the takedowns. Uh, but I could see Farod, you know, getting the first two rounds maybe. And, and I think either way, though, I mean, Aaron will take over and win the last three rounds of the fight um, if she doesn't take over from the get-go. Uh, but... Uh, Aaron also has a two-inch reach advantage. Um, Aaron shows 53% striking accuracy with 62% striking defense. 36% um, takedown accuracy, um, and that probably hasn't been updated either, and 83% uh, takedown defense. Um, she averages almost three takedowns per 15 minutes. That's a good number. And she lands on average 5.58 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.32. Uh, that's decent there. And... Uh, She's taking on Manon Farot. She is 34 years old. She's 5'7 with a 66-inch reach. She is 11-1 and 6-0 and and in UFC as well. And she's a plus-124 underdog. Um, six wins by knockout. Never won or lost a fight by submission. Never been finished. Uh, she does have an advantage in the striking with her karate you know, type style. Uh, she uses a lot of push kicks and, and kicks with her lead leg a lot. You know That can throw people off. Uh, very accurate, but hasn't finished anybody in a long time. And uh, she has good footwork, good head movement, uh, good at using, uh, good at using her feints to set up her strikes. Likes to blitz in with big shots and duck back out of the pocket. Uh, the thing is, is she uses so much movement bouncing around the entire fight that she does slow down after the first two rounds. Uh, she's done it several times. Uh, the reason that I'm being so hard on her is that she look, you know, she hasn't looked like the big favorite that she is at times, especially in her last two fights. And uh, she does show 52% striking accuracy with 51% striking defense. 
Uh, 31% takedown accuracy, doesn't shoot very often, with a 65% takedown defense. And it says she averages one takedown per 15 minutes, but I don't don't understand where that's coming from. Um, But uh, she lands on average 4.71 strikes per minute uh, while absorbing 3.36. I do think Blanchfield will eventually take over this fight. Uh, I think she'll pressure, pressure, try to get a hold of her, try to get her down. I think she'll eventually get the takedowns, and I think she'll outlast and and definitely win the last three rounds and either win by decision or maybe a late submission. as far as I'll go with uh, with a fourth round, fourth round submission uh, win for Aaron Blanchfield, and everybody on Tapology is going with Blanchfield as well. I'm surprised the line's as close as it is. It's a good price, um, good price on her, man. And uh, that's it for my picks, guys. As far as my bets go, um, pull these up. Where is it? This one. As far as my bets go, we got this, man. It's uh, uh, I got to play on Jamal Emmers at minus 185. That's a one-unit play. Um, I got to play on Blanchfield at minus 130. Uh, it's a half-unit play. I got a small play on Joaquin Buckley at plus 125. It's a quarter unit. Uh, it's actually a little less than a quarter unit, like 200 bucks. Um, and then I got a two-fight parlay, which is Bill Algio and uh, Nur Sultan uh, Ruzabov. And uh, it's plus 110. That's a one-unit play. And as far as parlays go, guys, I had to do something a little different this time because uh, Bovada doesn't have most of the fights on this card up yet. So I had to do them on. Uh, I had to do my parlays on Bet Online, and uh, on Bet Online for whatever reason, it's like the way they have it set up. I can't screenshot all the fighters at the same time like I normally do, like the whole parlay. So I have to do it in like two two sections. So I just wrote it all out. Um, but uh, first up, I had a four fight parlay. Which is uh, Algio, Emmers, Arce, and Rezbuev, and that's a plus two seventy two. Um, and then to that, I added Lauren and Malcoon. That's plus six hundred and fifty seven. And then uh, to that, I added Blanchfield and Buckley, and that makes it a plus two thousand eight hundred fifty six. And then uh, to that, I added Bruno Silva and Connor Matthews, and that makes it a plus eighty seven hundred. I left a few fights out, man. If you really want to go, a, you know, with a Hail Mary parlay off of my picks, you know, feel free. Uh, I'm not going to do it this week. I'm just going to stick with what I got here. Um, and yeah, man. So, I mean, that's it for me there, guys. And um, I appreciate y'all caring what I have to say as always, man. Um, you have no idea how much I appreciate all you guys. And uh, let's see if there's any changes to this card yet. And uh, I'm sorry, dude, if I sound, you know, kind of out of it, man, I'm, I'm pretty tired. You know, I've been switching over to nights, like I said, and I'm about to, I just wanted to get this done before I head out of town to go, to go work for the next day or so. I didn't want to be late getting it out. I've been, you know, getting them out on Wednesday every time here lately. So, um, but let's just see if there's any changes to this card real quick. Everything looks the same so far. Yeah, I think everything's the same. I don't think we lost any fights or anything since I did the video. Um, but yeah, man. So thank you guys so much as always, man. I appreciate y'all and, uh, I hope y'all win some money, man. And, uh, and, uh, post your bets in my Facebook group, guys. I want to see them. Y'all have a good one, man. I'm out of here.